morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this, the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, in our season where we're celebrating our 75th anniversary. As we prepare for our big celebration next Sunday, today is kind of a Sabbath, a bit of a rest, a day when we recognize and celebrate the ways that this congregation helps us to stop to refresh, to rejuvenate, and head back into the world and into our Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, refreshed and ready for what awaits us. We're focusing on that way of love practice of rest and the restoration that comes from that. As we prepare for next Sunday, a reminder that we will be worshiping at Lions Park. Worship will begin at 10 a.m., followed by a picnic box lunch we hope that you'll be able to join us. If you uh, need to still sign up, there will be a sign up outside. Uh, and uh, just for you, uh, you can sign up today. Um, and uh, you will want to bring your lawn chairs uh, so that you'll have a place to sit. We will have a few chairs on hand. If you are concerned about getting your chairs to wherever they need to be and also getting your car where it needs to be, don't worry. We will have a valet service. You'll just drive up. Um, to the place by the band shell, and we'll help you bring your chairs uh, to that CD place um, in front of the band shell, and we'll get your car where it needs to go if you're in need of that service. So simply look for a large blue welcome sign to find your way to that. I also want to uh, uh, invite you all to join us for Feed My Starving Children, God's Work Our Hands. That will be on Saturday, September 18th. Um, you can check your bulletin for details on uh, when and where. Um, but if you'd like to sign up for that as well, you can sign up today after worship um, out by uh, coffee hour. And friends, I want to just note that there is a lot going on in the world, isn't there? In the news, we learn about new things and challenging things each and every day. And our faith helps us respond to those things. So if you have questions about pandemic life, or about the things happening in Texas or the things happening in Afghanistan and how your faith interacts with that and you'd like to have a conversation, I invite you to be in touch with me so that we can uh, create that space uh, for conversation or with Deacon David as well. And know uh, that you all and the world as we respond to these uh, challenging times uh, remain in our prayers and we know that God is at work and will guide us through. With those announcements, we will prepare our hearts for worship by listening to the prelude.
we come to worship, to be nourished, body, mind, and spirit by God's love, so that we may go out and share that love, feeding those who hunger. We come to rest from our day-to-day -day labors. We come to breathe. We come to find peace. We come to be healed. We come to be refreshed with the bread of life. We come to connect to God and to one another. God, we praise you for these 75 years of love in and through this place. Come into our midst. Gather us in, nourish us, restore us, and help us always as we continue on that journey of your way of love. Amen. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Gracious God, throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, for our children's time today, we'll do a little review. Last week, you, we um, began thinking and talking about our heart work and what work our hearts were up to, what work they may be feeling called to do. And we get another great story this week that helps us continue that thinking. Uh, Jesus uh, shows us and reminds us that healing work is heart work. Oftentimes, we think about healing work as science work and as um, medicine work and these things, but our hearts play a really big part of that. And so we get to follow Jesus' lead, and we get to think about how our hearts can be part of healing, whether it be um, uh, conflicts in the world, whether it be other people being sick, right? We can think about all those ways and things we can do that are heart work, that are about healing. 
So I see everybody here doing some great hard work. They're wearing their masks, right? Washing your hands. Who knew that these things could be healing, powerful healing work and heart work, right? Um, in the church, we have two things that are particularly um, uh, connected to our heart healing work. And if you were checking out the cart back there, you might have seen little vials of oil, right? Our little anointing oils that we use at, uh, at baptism and in times when people are sick, right? Those are so they're little symbols. Um, if you want to grab one of those and to help your healing heart work, you can this week. Um, and then, of course, prayers. And as we pray later, you'll hear some of those things that are on our hearts, some of those things that can help inspire us for our healing heart work this week. Anyways, look forward to hearing and seeing how your heart work uh, take shape here in these coming weeks. Um, let's hear some of these stories and, and, and get to work here a little bit. Thank you. <clears throat> the first reading is from Isaiah 35, verses 4 to 7. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus set out and went to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman, whose little daughter had an unclean spirit, immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin, she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home bound the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. As we settle into this sermon time and this worship focused on rest and integration and healing, I'm going to invite you into something a little different than we usually do in worship. I'm going to invite you into a moment of restorative yoga. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to make sure that you're not going to get too close to your neighbor. If you're like this and you're going to hit a neighbor, go ahead and spread out just a little bit. 
And I want you to sit in your seat with your feet firmly planted on the ground. And then I want you to raise your arms so that they're um, in 90 degree angles with your fingers pa uh, pointed toward the sky. And then I'm going to invite you to inhale. And as you inhale, you're going to open your arms. And you're going to feel the stretch across your heart space. You're looking like goalposts today. <laughs> and then exhale and close back and inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. How does your heart space feel? I don't know about how you've experienced this, but what we've just done is called a heart opener in yoga. And when I practice moves such as these, the name accurately describes what I feel in my heart space. While I begin, when I begin, I feel a bit closed in, maybe hunched in on myself, focused inward and on my world. And then by the end of the exercise, I feel open. My heart feels stretched and ready to receive. I feel energized and welcoming. I feel that my heart is opened. As I was reading our gospel text for this day, it was the phrase, Ephatha, be opened, that caught my heart. The stories that we have in our gospel text to me seem to be their own version of heart openers, inviting us to be opened. In that last story we heard, we find Jesus as he speaks those very words, a healing command to a man bound by hearing loss and the inability to speak. The words that describe his healing are literally that the man's hearing was opened up and his tongue shackle was released and he spoke straight. He was opened, released, set free. Now, some of us know the struggles of hearing loss, how it binds us to a world we can't, where we can't understand others. And some of us know the feeling of being set free from that bound place by the gift of modern conveniences like hearing aids, and some of us know what it's like to be bound by this, the inability to speak. Maybe it's a stutter or perhaps stage fright or simply not being able to find the words to articulate what you're trying to say, what you really, really want to say. And perhaps we know the feeling of being set free by finding another way to communicate by word or action or in writing. And some of us know the experience of being blind or at least not being able to see very well. And some of us know the experience of being set free by modern conveniences like glasses or contexts, contacts that help us to see that yes, indeed there are individual leaves on a tree. Or some of us have learned Braille or how to maneuver using a support cane or a seeing eye dog, ways that set us free from those things that bind us. We know in such moments as though those what it means to be opened. And if we take it a step further, we know what it's like to be closed in on ourselves perhaps so that we can't hear what another person is saying, can't hear their hurt or their opinion or their position. And some of us knows what it is to be closed in and silenced because of fear or because someone has used their power 
to mute us and our voices of dissent. Some of us know what it is to be blinded, to not be able to see the world in a different way, to not be able to see the injustice that might be around us, the disparity between us and others, even when it should be obvious. To these closed ways, Jesus' words come as well. Be opened. Be opened. Ephatha. And just in case, just in case we didn't know what that might look like to be opened, in case we needed an example, Jesus has conveniently given it to us in that first story we heard in our gospel text. You see, Jesus, a Jew and a man, is approached by a woman, a Gentile Syrophoenician woman. And this brave, outspoken woman bursts onto the scene, not waiting for an invitation, bold to speak her need. My daughter is bound by an unclean spirit, she says. Please cast the demon out of her. And Jesus says, let the children be fed first. Meaning, let the Jewish people, the children of Abraham, be fed first. For it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Wait a minute. Did Jesus just call this woman a dog? What is going on? How could Jesus' very own heart be closed like this? While we're reeling from that affront, the Syrophoenician executes some comedic jujitsu with her twisting words so that she says to Jesus, Sir, even house dogs under the table scarf down the kids' bitty scraps. Her words are true. Even the house dogs do scarf down the itty-bitty kid scraps. I know that from my very own firsthand experience because there's a dog named George who at the web house is currently getting way more dinner than he should be. The words Jesus will utter in just a moment, be opened, are presented to him first through this woman's challenge. The meaning of the Syrophoenician's words are this, could you open your mind, Jesus? Or are you so closed-minded that you cannot see that your mission and ministry can be bigger, can be beyond only the children of Abraham? Be opened, she says through her words. And Jesus is open. Jesus sees the woman's point. He lets the words work an opening within him and his ministry. And Jesus, Jesus is rerouted by her words, turned around. Does anyone else hear the word recalculating in that calm, patient GPS voice? Jesus' path of teaching and healing changes. Instead of returning to Jewish territory, he continues on in the Gentile world, and he continues to heal and to teach, and Jesus' life and ministry, death and resurrection is not just for the Jewish people, but for all people, because Jesus has been opened. The truth is, friends, we need to be opened on a regular basis basis. We need to be rerouted, turned, healed, released from what binds us. And this place, this community, this congregation, and our worship together and our learning together in which the word of God works within our hearts is a place where that opening can happen. In our rest and our Sabbath, in our reflection and restoration, we can hear God's call. God's call 
to be open, spoken into our lives and into our hearts. Sometimes that call comes in a gentle salve, in the laying out of hands and healing words, like in that story of the man who could not hear or speak. And sometimes that comes in a challenge that calls us out, shakes us up, and changes everything, like we witnessed with that Syrophoenician woman and Jesus. Always, always, God is at work, opening our eyes, our ears, our mouths, and our hearts. Do you want to practice it with me again? Be opened. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise. And with open hearts, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship, enliven your church. Guide all evangelists and preachers, prophets, and missionaries who seek to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless all who advocate for healthy forests, unpolluted air, and clean waterways. Inspire all people to show care for the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world. And as, as we celebrate Labor Day this weekend, be with all those seeking meaningful employment, all those caught in work that is unfulfilling, 
and be with all those who must work too hard to make ends meet. Unite us all as we seek the health, safety, and dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You accompany those who are most in need. We ask that you shelter all fleeing from violence or persecution. Protect any who are in danger. Make sure that all those who seek health care may receive it. Sustain those who are in uncertain and stable times. Be with those rebuilding after natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation and be with all those preparing for children's ministries in this coming year. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you embrace all who have died in the faith and brought them, you brought them into glory into your glorious presence. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. We pray them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with those around you. As part of the 75th anniversary, we reached out to former pastors, and um, today we have a video from Pastor Tom Zulik, who sends his greetings. Hopefully you can so hear So good to talk to everyone and celebrate the 75th anniversary of St. Mark. Uh, so many memories of everybody at the church, and of course, you know, raising my son and daughter there, Bethany and Ian, and baptizing them at St. Mark and loving all the fellowship, all the guys on the golf team, all the people at the center, everyone who got pads started at St. Mark back in the day. Uh, so many wonderful memories of, of wonderful people. And uh, I guess I could name everyone you know, at the moment, and there are many people I forgot, you know, over the years, but I do stay in touch and look at the newsletter and and uh, keep up, you know, with what's going on. It's wonderful that this congregation is still so vibrant and going forward, and uh, you can be proud, we can all be proud of, of St. Mark over the years. And uh, I played a small part, and I'm, you know, I'm very happy that I did. It was wonderful to be a part of your lives uh, for seven and a half years and to enjoy the ministry that we shared together, some wonderful times. Uh, and I remember, uh, you know, those special moments of anniversaries in the past, of weddings and and funerals and people's lives who who began in baptism and, and ended in their in their passing on. So I'm looking forward to being with, with everyone uh, in September and enjoying the fellowship. Um, I still say amen and I still say hallelujah and uh, I'll be uh, looking forward to seeing everyone. So just a brief uh, kind of summary. I've uh, been out in Ohio, in the Northwest Ohio Synod since 2004, and uh, worked with the ELCA Foundation for a number of years as a gift planning officer. And right now, uh, having been retired since the end of 2017, I'm doing a transitional interim ministry in a couple congregations, so that's, that's a lot of fun. And uh, my daughter Bethany is doing a master's at Michigan State. And Ian is living in Chicago. He lives in Berwyn, uh, following his music and writing career. And uh, so I give thanks for, for both of them. And uh, it's nice to know that uh, we still have a, a Chicago connection with Ian in Chicago. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I get out there periodically. So anyway, um, 
life is good, um, God is good, and all of you at St. Mark are wonderful. I just want to lift up Martin Staunt. Martin was a very special friend of mine uh, at St. Mark, and of course all of you know him, and uh, he was one of uh, my mentors, I guess, in, some, in, in, in many ways, and I give thanks for someone like Martin Staunt and, and all those great people. So, uh, anyway, blessings to you. Happy anniversary. I'll see you soon. Hi there, friends at St. Mark Lutheran Church. Tim Anderson coming to you from Austin, Texas. You know, back in the day, my parents... Carl and Mary Ann Anderson would bring me and my five younger siblings to church just about every Sunday at St. Mark. And we'd always sit in that first pew row on the pulpit side. It was just about impossible to get all eight of us there to church on time. And that first pew was usually open. And one of the best memories I have about growing up at St. Mark relates to this. Basketball was my first love. And to think that in the late 60s, when the center was constructed, that church leaders would put in a hardwood basketball court. I mean, I just loved all the time that we were able to spend at the center. And we went to confirmation class, too, because you had to go to that class in order to play on the team. I want to say thank you also to the St. Mark Foundation. A little bit after college, of course, I went to seminary, went to the same place that my dad went to, Luther Northwestern and St. Mark covered my tuition fully. So thanks to the foundation for that. Tuition back then wasn't as expensive as it is today, but all the same. My wife and I, Denise, were newly married, and that just gave us a great start as, you know, we had, I had four or five years of school to deal with, and uh, very grateful to this day for that support that was uh, offered to us at that time. Did my internship in Peru of South America, and uh, when you learn how to speak Spanish, you live there almost two years, and you make yourself available to the church, eh, a good chance that you're going to end up in a place like Texas, where I've spent more than 30 years in ministry, all of it doing dual language ministry. So uh, when I first got to Houston, uh, I was welcomed by fellow sons of the congregation, Tim and Steve Quill. Like I did, they went to Prospect, they played on the golf team there. And it was great to be welcomed by them and still in great contact with those two colleagues. And so I've served two congregations in uh, 25 years here in Texas. And uh, now I uh, direct efforts for a group called Austin City Lutherans, who call ourselves the other ACL in Austin. You've heard of the other one. And uh, we do social ministry for our 12 ELCA congregations, food pantry, early childhood development. And now we're getting involved to combat homelessness. So I'm very grateful to St. Mark, which uh, helped shape me not only as a pastor, but as a person. As some of you know, in the last number of years, 2014 and also 2019, I've got the writing bug. And so I've been able to uh, put into words onto the page what's important to me in terms of ministry. And I know I got a great booster up there in the congregation, first name Carl, and you've studied both those books there as well. So thanks again to St. Mark. Congrats on the 75 years and may God continue to bless and guide you because I'm not, I know I'm not the only one who's been shaped as a person at St. Mark and may you continue to do that for generations to come. Thanks be to God and to you. Amen. What fun it was to hear from Pastor Zulik and Pastor Anderson. We're thankful for the gifts that they have and the ways that they um, gathered those gifts and used them here at St. Mark and now use them out in the world. And we're thankful for the ways that you use your talent, time, and resources to support this ministry of St. Mark and use them out in the world as well. Please stand as we pray a blessing over those offerings that you give. God of love, for 75 years, 
you have moved and continue to move the people of this community to give generously of their time, talents, and resources to share your love with the world. Receive the gifts we bring and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. At this time, we gather around this holy meal so that we may be refreshed and restored and sent out into the world. You'll want to find your cup with your wafer and your juice or wine. Friends who are gathering with us over Facebook Live, you'll want to find uh, bread or cracker, juice or wine so that you might partake with us. What we'll do is we'll say the words of institution and the Lord's Prayer, then we'll say together. And after that, I'll say, taste and see that the Lord is good. And then we'll open up our wafer and we'll all partake of the body of Christ together. And we'll open up after that our juice or wine and all partake of the blood of Christ together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Gathered into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, the and the power and, and the glory forever, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, that you have strengthened our hearts through this feast of life and salvation. Shine the light of Christ on our path, that we may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you in the way of love, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> the blessing of God who loves us, provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
peace. Be God's love in the world. Thanks be to God.